Kevin is one of the greatest basketball players of all time. He shoots. But you kind of just give it to him, and then you try to move around a little bit. So <laughs> He's won multiple championships. I feel like you do everything you can to stop somebody, and it's not working. He's been the MVP of the NBA. He's killing me. Like, he's he's got 50. He's going to score 50. He's won gold medals. Like, he act like he doesn't see me at all, and I feel like I got some of the longest arms in the league. He's a student of the game. KD was so mad. I'm like, bro, do you, not, do you not understand what we're trying to tell you? You're that good. He's a cheat coach. He's going back in defense. He's back penalty. He just goes well. Of the league, bro. And he has more to learn. Russ, Serge, and Russ, and Katie, and Perk, that will go at it. But, I mean, that was just normal. The, that mindset, that's the separator. I have never seen a player be less affected by somebody. If you want your life to be changed, go watch Katie work out. And Kevin Durant is pretty much just like, this is going to sound weird, mentally penetrating. <laughs> I don't think people understand that. Is it ever, do you ever feel, because uh, I was going to bring up game seven against Kevin in the, in the Nets series. And I, I was sitting, I was sitting right behind uh, his mom and Rich climbing and watching the game up close. I mean, you were in his shit the whole game. He was hitting ridiculous shots. And I'm thinking to myself, like PJ's done this now for six nights. He did it. In the first series, he's going to do it in the next series. You did it in the finals. And you're going against, you're guarding literally the best offensive players in the world. And that night, I just thought to myself, P.J. Tucker could not have played better defense tonight. And Kevin had, what he ended up with 47 or 48? Yeah, 50 points. Bro. Yeah, called it, called it 50, 50 ball. 50 okay, ball. 50 ball. At times, does it feel like an exercise in futility? Like there's nothing you can do against no, the best players in the if world. No, because if I if I felt yeah. like that, then I couldn't do it. Yeah. Do you get discouraged? I guess is a better question. No. Because it's like okay, you oh man, that was incredible. You made that. Now do it again. Now do it again. Because I'm not gonna stop. I'm not gonna stop. And that was the that was the that was the conver that was the confrontation. But we do that dude. Me and him like ever since I've known him, we've done that forever. Like it's. I'm, and I kept telling I'm like, and we're talking shit, you know, it's like, whatever. But I'm like, he's like, stop hacking me. I'm like, I'm not going to stop. Like, as like we got face to face. I'm not going anywhere. Like, it's that tricking myself because he's killing me. Like, he's he's got 50. He's going to score 50. I'm telling my teammates, he's going to score 50. Y'all guard y'all, man. He's going to score. But how many, how many, how many shots is going to take him? How hard is he going to? I'm going to make him work harder than anybody. I'm going to work him. Cause he's gonna score. <laughs> like, and then you, I'm telling you, you have to trick yourself. Like, we asked Drew this when Drew came on after you guys won the finals. Did you think the shot was a three? The shot to tie it? I'm not gonna lie, man. When he turned, I just kind of, and you can see my face. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> cause I, like, to close that distance with him, it's like, cause he's so, like, he's, like, you know, he's so long. He's so, he's so tall. Like, you, if I can't get in his body and I can't really affect him, then he's like, it's nothing else to do. And he got that space. It was a great move. And I didn't have time to look at his feet. I really didn't. I'm, I'm trying so hard to get there to try to give any kind of contest I can. And so I didn't know. All I know is when I turned and looked, I knew it was like, it was. It was in. It was, I knew it. I seen it. It was, it was crazy. We had, we had Drew on after the Olympics, and he was talking about KD. He was talking about both playing against him and then playing with him. Mm -hmm. And the word, the phrase he used was uh, KD was mentally penetrating the Bucks, <laughs> And that's just, All that's right. whatever. That's what he said. <laughs> yeah. What was your game five and game seven, just being out there with him, watching him just sort of go into like God mode? I mean, you've, You've had a lot of great performances in the playoffs. You've been up. You've seen a lot of other guys have them. Mm -hmm. What are you thinking? Like when this is all happening? Honestly, he he was he does stuff all the time where you're just like, what is what? How did he just? It's just the and it's honestly the the stuff that's most impressive to me is like the you know dribble dribble like pull up mid range where the hand is faced and just hit it. It's not really like like. It is like the spin move, like the tough shots like that. That's all tough, but he just is so, unaf so unaffected by any defender. 
I have never seen a player be less affected by somebody than Kevin Durant. And when he was doing that, it was just kind of like you, I was just trying to figure out ways to like support him in a way. Cause I knew he was tired and he was just like doing that. So, you, you know, like, like in that, when he hit that shot, I was like sprinting baseline in case. And that, I, I had fouled out, but I wish I'd still been in for that second shot. Cause I was going to do the same thing. Yeah. I, when he hit that shot, as I just sprinted by him, like hoping that like, if he missed, like I was down there for it. So that was like, kind of like how I tried to like support him in that moment, but you kind of <laughs> just give it to him. And then you try to move around a little bit so <laughs> so that the other guys don't just double team him. So it's, it kind of looks like you're doing something. Yeah, yeah. it's a fake hustle. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's the best way to describe it. We're, we we're going to talk about the net series, but I wanted to ask about Kevin with the shot in Game Seven. Did you what What did you think? Did you think that you were done? No, I saw a sweat on the line. Like, I actually had no question that it was a two. Yeah. I think everybody else was shocked that it wasn't a three. But the angle that I was at, I was like, no, he, that big toe was on the line. That long, that, that long big toe was on the line. So I was pretty confident in it. Um, now, the second one, the one in overtime, that one I was nervous. The one I was guarding him, because it was like when I turned to look, it was dead on. And I'm like, oh, my God, like, he did it again. <laughs> but he ended up missing, thank God. I also had the perfect angle from the stands on his shot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wasn't at the game, but watching it just on TV, it's like not – this is just literally a battle, a war of attrition. After that game, I was like, I cannot wait for it all to be over. <laughs> it was so, like, ment- mentally, it was it was draining. Again, mentally it's draining because I feel like you do everything you can to stop somebody and it's not working. And Kevin Durant is pretty much just like, it's like, it's going to sound weird, mentally penetrating you. <laughs> <laughs> and like, he's not, and, he, and he's not stopping. And then physically, oh, oh my gosh. Physically, it is, I was, I was hurting. Every, I mean, everybody was. Matter of fact, you can see KD uh, game seven. Like you knew he was tired, you knew he was gassed. But man, we both teams left it out there. That was after that series. I'm like, man, look, whatever happens after, like we have to win now. We we did too much and and came too far. We have t- we get we have t-shirts made from certain things that are said on the show, and um, that's got to be one of my favorite <laughs> quotes from the entire. <laughs> podcast show kd is mentally penetrating (laughs) would you would you say that russ was the leader of those teams and not and not kevin like in terms of their personality who who was like who was the guy that that was not not to say the alpha because that's the wrong word because i think kevin is an alpha but just in terms of like the spiritual emotional leader it was russ right Mm. yeah good or or Nick Collison. Yeah, I, I think so. <laughs> nah, yeah, old Nick. Old mate, he's just in the background, eh, just picking up the screen. Like, oh, come on, guys. He's the ambulance, mate. Um, no, he, um, see, when those three, because it was, it was awesome. Then this is just me from, this is just remembering from as a rookie. Russ, Katie, and Serge, and Perk, you know, they're all bloody fragging. That was awesome, right? And they'll all go at it, bro. All of them will just like constantly just, you'll call it bickering, but they'll just argue crazy. And it just created that really competitive environment, right? Like there won't be a practice where it's like kind of soft. It's, it's always like intense. All of them just like trying to just beat the other one, right? Crazy. And so it was, yeah, no, I, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't have like, it wouldn't be fair to, for me to say like who was like alpha leader or whatever, but like, I think what's fair to say is that that was a, a healthy, you know, a healthy team, if that makes sense. It may not, if you're there and you're like, oh, shit, like they're arguing crazy. For some people that might not be healthy, but like it, they got to the the point right away, right? Which was awesome. And they just constantly made each other better, I thought. 
you know. And as a rookie, bro, I, I, I was I was all about it. I, I just came and I had to step up my game and kind of like you know play at that level, <laughs> or even try and get acknowledged to even be seen. You know what I mean? So what you're describing, like I, that's something that like I think a lot of us we crave that, right? And and when you're in that environment too, there's accountability. Yeah. And we're all better off when we're being held accountable. Serge and Russ, Serge and Russ and Katie and Perk, they'll all go at it. But, I mean, that was just normal. But it was good as well. It's like a healthy discussion. Obviously, you would need like a, you know, an umpire in there. Just, oh, simmer down, mate. You know, oh, yeah, that was uncalled for, whatever. Every now and then, but that's okay. But you get to the, you get to the root of the problem and then you can start working on solution, right? Yeah, you know, and then there's been a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of stuff thrown at KD's way. You know, I'm always rude for him because he's like one of the best dudes that I've ever, I've been around. You know, like he's up there, like he's just a good dude. Like the dude just want to play basketball. And uh, I always tell people, if you want your life to be changed, go watch KD work out. And uh, I had it like a, my bro, a close close friend, my god brother. And I brought him to practice. He watched Katie work out after the workout. Like you see like people's eyes get teary. Like, you know, they, he just met Michael Jackson or something. He was like, that was the greatest thing I've ever seen. I appreciate you. Now he had a son that's like eight or nine. <laughs> he got his son uh, doing all types of workouts and drills. I'm like, all right, don't be that dad. But Katie was the cause of this. Like Katie's seven feet tall. I don't care what the stats she says. He's seven feet tall. And the way he handles the ball and the way he shoots the ball is like nothing else I've seen. And like, like you know, I've seen playing step shoot, but every time KD shoots, the ball goes in the exact same way every single time. And it's like, that's just a different level. And it's just like, there's nothing you can do. Like you, you stand out of chance. And we double teamed him in practice one day. This is before Devin Booker said, we're not, we're not double teaming in the scrimmage. And we working on our games. This is after, <laughs> this is after uh, All Star break, when we just trying to get our rhythm back. And we, me and Draymond are competitors. Like we trying to win. So the only way we gonna win is if we double team KD. <laughs> KD was so mad. I'm like, bro, do you not, do you not understand what we're trying to tell you? You're that good that the one that one guy says he's the best defender of all time. And I truly believe that I'm really good at defense. Like I'm really good at defense. I won't say I'm the best of all time. I'm better than some guys who say they are the best. I'm not talking about Draymond, but there's some guys who think they're really good at defense. So like, I'm better than you at defense. And the other guys, I'm like, like Mookie Blaylock. He might be one of the best defenders of all time. Nobody will ever say his name. Like, I go deep in my bag with my basketball knowledge, right? So I studied the game. But I'm like, you got two guys who are, like, elite all time at defense, and we have to double team you. Like, don't be mad at us, bro. Like, you're that good. Like, relax. <laughs> But yeah, did you have did you have a favorite player, somebody that you idolize, or somebody that you try to model your game after when you were when you re not necessarily when you were eight years old, but I mean when you realized, oh shit, I'm I'm tall, I'm athletic, I can shoot, like I, I can play basketball, like this is who I want to be on the court. For me, it was always Kevin Durant, really. Uh, like I, I watched him in high school, I watched him in college, and I definitely uh, watched him from his rookie year to this point, and. Uh, just the way he handled the basketball, like he was when I was um, coming up, he was labeled as six nine, and I thought like he was amazing then. But getting in the league and seeing that he's actually seven foot and he's doing all this stuff, and when I can test him, like he act like he doesn't see me at all, and I feel like I got some of the longest arms in the league. He can do like everything on the basketball court. So that that like when I see him, I'm like, yeah, I want I want to be like him. He said, so he said, I, I was reading a couple of things earlier today. He said uh, publicly, I think he even said it to us at, at certain points that he sees part of your game in him. You know, he's acknowledged that before. Is that a thing? Do you, was it weird for you when you sort of modeled yourself after him to a certain extent for that kind of thing to happen? You're kind of like, oh shit, not only did I dream about being in the NBA and I'm in the NBA, it's like I dreamed about being that guy and he's saying publicly he plays like me. I mean, yeah, it's weird. I mean, I, I never imagined being in this position at all. Uh, I dreamed of it, but I mean, I, I couldn't think of it being right now. And 
like those comments make me want like motivate me to like go even harder like to, to be maybe even better than him and like he he set the he set the blueprint and set the bar really really high and, like and that's what I want to take. Did you have a, a welcome to the NBA moment where you were where you were just like this is a different level? Oh yeah, yeah. There was back to my rookie year. We're on a road trip. I think um, at this point I'm coming off the bench. I think I was a second wing off the bench. Um, so we get into the game and playing the Warriors in Oracle. Um, Kevin Durant's on the team, and so I like get switched on to him, and so right away. I'm like, all right, I'm guarding Kevin Durant. Obviously, you know, freaking out a little bit. And so right away, I'm like, all right, I'm going to get in this guy. Like, I don't – he can't just baby me right now on TV. So I try to pressure him, and he loses the ball, goes out to half court. So right on, I'm like, hell yeah. Like, this guy's about to pick it up. He's going to give it up. I'm going to be good. So I follow him out to half court. I'm like, I'm going to – I'm pressuring this guy. Like, what? And he takes – like, he catches it. He, like, looks at the shot clock. There's, like, six seconds left and takes, like, three dribbles. He just – Left hand, three dribbles, gets to around 18 feet, just hits me with a quick shoulder in the chest and just fades away, bangs the two. And as he's as he's going back in defense, he's back penalty, just goes, welcome to the league, Rook. And so that was my first moment of like, God, these guys are just unbelievable. Again, yeah, I'm guarding Kevin Hart. I think I'm doing a great job. He loses the ball. He's at half court, and he just hits like the easiest dribble pull up on me. And uh, we had guys on our team, like Torian Prince at the time, like broke down laughing on the court. You can actually see it in film. He literally like turned, he looked at me with like the biggest smile on his face because he was guarding him. But that was, I think, that was definitely one of my welcome to the NBA moments. It's at least one I, one I remember very vividly. You know, I, I always say this about Kevin it's like guarding him is is impossible for a number of reasons one of which is that the referees allow him to carry the ball every time he dribbles it yeah. and when he came on the podcast i pointed this out to him and he admitted it he so did. when you say he took 3 dribbles he had 3 discontinued dribbles by the, oh. by the by the rule book i'm just letting you know that credit for him for admitting to it a lot of guys won't now i mean he's you know when you get to that level they they let you get away with a lot too so each guy kind of has his little niche he gets away with I don't think I, I actually learned how to like actually work on my game until I came to the U.S. Wow. So, but so once, yeah. So once basketball border without borders happen, you you get identified, um, and your your father works out this scholarship mm -hmm. uh, to I believe it's called God's Academy, yep, God's in, Academy in Texas. Yeah. Um, That's the most Texas name. <laughs> <in high school. laughs> yeah. Oh man. Of course. Yeah. Of course, it's called God's Academy. Anyways, uh, so. Uh, at that point now you're like you're full tilt you're mm. full throttle you're yep. you're you're really into basketball mm -hmm. and you've but you've never really watched basketball no. either so do you do you remember your, your sort of your first viewing experiences or like was there a player that you sort of were like oh i could i could do what he does was there a player does. that yeah, you yeah. sort of modeled your game after um i think early on like again like i didn't i didn't watch that much basketball right like so in my head i'm just like okay like coming in i always seen like african kids it's like you get to a certain level and and you're big like, cuz pretty tall and and it's like you're on a post right like you run you dunk and early on i think one thing i i, I just always thought like damn like i, I wish I can do like more. Like I just, because again, coming back to me being a little kid, I wanted to be different. Like I, I never wanted to do the same thing. So I'm, I'm always thinking like, yo, like I don't want to be just on a block and just, you know, like be a post player. Like I want to, I want to do different things. So I always like kind of watch like players that like handle the ball, like, you know, like Kevin Durant or um, Tracy McGrady, like anything that I could find really. I think at that point was just like, I'm just trying to find anybody that's kind of tall and that can handle the ball. <laughs> and like, that's what I want. And it was, it was a dream obviously, because I was nowhere near those players, but in my head it was always like, yo, like I want to be different. Like I, I want, I don't want to just be on the post. Like. Drew, what was the, what was the experience like of playing with Kevin? Obviously you've played against him for so many years. Oh my gosh. He's unreal. He's 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 unreal. Uh, he makes the game look so easy. Nothing phases him how he plays. I mean, yes, he's seven feet, but 
it's like he doesn't he doesn't see anybody. It's just like him and the him and the hoop. It's like cone drills. It's just if you're gonna if you're gonna just, just go work out and get into your bag and uh, work on something like that's his game, and nobody faces him. It's it's amazing. It's amazing to see. So, uh, so why Brooklyn? What was it about this situation and this opportunity that uh, you were willing to leave? I mean, the, the, the culture that you helped build and, the, and, the, and the, the dynasty that you were a part of. Yeah. Um, yeah, when you put it like that, you know, you, you flash back to, <laughs> yeah, why did I leave, man? <laughs> nah, look, I, I think everything that I've learned um, from being, you know, under Pop and Timmy, Tony and Manu, um, and being that bridge from, you know, what they were to now the, the new guys and the young guys that are there, I think, you know, there's a part of me that can still implement that and the purpose is an NBA championship. And when you have that every day, and again, you, you get the guys together and everyone in the organization working towards that one goal, it's, um, you know, it's a pretty fun feeling. You were with Kevin this summer in Tokyo. Uh, what's it gonna be like with these guys after just going into battle with them for so many different years, being, on, being teammates with them? Yeah, well, it was unreal to be able to um, have the conversation with Kevin about coming to Brooklyn and just to understand how much of a pure Huber he, he is and, and, and talk basketball with him. Um, it's, but it's good. It, 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 it's the game. It's um, understanding how, how big the, the game has you know, gotten to around the world. But to be able to compete against you know, him and, and others at that elite level on you know, in, a, in an international stage, now to bring that same mentality that I had, that I'm sure he had for our countries now into the same locker room, I think, again, that purpose and that, that driving force of what we're trying to do here and, and win another championship, it's, it's exciting for sure. I read a story about uh, when you were at Texas and he came to visit oh my and he God. came with you. So you knew then that he was going to be like listen, this. Listen, man. I knew then. I knew he was a junior high school that he's the best player in the world. Really? And I'm not just saying that. Like, it's not like, yeah. like Kobe's my favorite. Like, uh, yeah. whatever. Like, guys, Maybe not at the time, but you knew yeah, at some like point he's he gonna was going to be, be like, there, yeah. yeah, he's like one of those guys. Like, he's one of those guys right now. Like, that day, I was like, why is he coming here? <laughs> he has no business stepping foot on this campus. Like, he really, a junior high school, destroyed. We were, mind you, Texas and Duke were one and two that year, like preseason. It's gonna come up later. Yeah. Don't worry. There's, <laughs> no this, there's no way this. There's no way this is gonna. Oh we're God. not gonna leave this out oh of the way now. Oh my no. God. It'll come up later. Known. Don't worry. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> we're like high as ever. Like we're like one of one of two best teams in, in the country. This kid's coming in. It's like whatever, dog. I mean, he just everything he does right now. He was doing it. He's passing half, and like I remember, Lamar is like standing there like. Feet on the three point line, he just like as he pulled up, it was so much. It was like I was literally looking at it like, what? Hold on, driving by guys, dunking like it was crazy. It was like a video game. <laughs> like seriously, nobody could guard him. I had a similar experience. It was right after uh, his rookie year. And he had a good rookie year. I think he won rookie of the year, but he had like it was inefficient. He, I think he shot around 40%. It was not the Kevin Durant right. we know today. Right, 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 right. He was figuring things out as right. a rookie. Um, but I was with the USA basketball team, the national team that summer, mm -hmm. as they were all doing training camp and got to play with them for a couple weeks. And at the end of that camp, they were like, Kevin, you're not going to be on the team. But you knew then, after those two weeks, that he was going to be – like he's going to be a top five player right. within the next two or three years. You could right. see it then. Right. Is Luca the best player in the NBA next season? Um, is that out of the realm no, of possibility? No, no, he's not. He's not the best. You player. don't think so? No, I think I think the best. I mean, I I think the best player in the NBA next season is the person who was the best player on Team USA this year. Okay. I think I think Luca. I think and he he lives in the borough of Brooklyn. I think that Luca. <laughs> I think I think Luca is going to be in the conversation. You know for sure, but like. Everything that Luca did and everything that Luca had did in the playoffs and like that, like Katie's done that 
for years and has won and he's done it no at a higher stage. And and even just think about talk about a crazy the guy tore his Achilles and then he did what he did in the playoffs, even though they didn't win and they had some, you know, bad luck and everything like that, why they didn't why they didn't necessarily get to the finals. And then and then took no time off and did this in Tokyo. I mean, that's insane in its own right. I agree. I, I was just posing the question. I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's, the question. I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility in the next couple of years. I mean, he's he's obviously on that track, but I don't yeah. think it's happening. I don't think it will be next year. You know, I've been playing a lot of golf lately. Yeah. So all these guys that I've been playing with, a lot of them are, you know, hedge fund guys, Wall Street guys, whatever. And all they want to talk is hoops. And every time they're asking me who's the best player, who are the three best players, whatever it may be. You know, if you were building a team tomorrow, who would you pick, right? You always talk about these conversations. And inevitably, like, Kevin's name comes up. And I'm just like, he doesn't count. Like, he just doesn't count because he's a cheat code. Yeah. He's a cheat code. There's no one on planet Earth that can do what he does as efficiently as he does it. Yeah, he's a video game. Um, he's a video. Yeah, he's, a, he's a video game. No, I, I agree with you, though. I agree with you. I think, I think when healthy, I think he is the best player in the NBA next season. I always feel like I'm a student of the game and somebody who's experienced so much and played in different eras. I'm looking forward to him teaching me some more things about it as well. Do you, you feel like you still have more to learn? Yeah, that's, for sure. I, I, I want, for, for everybody listening, wherever you're listening to this podcast, this is such, <laughs> this is such an important, important point that Kevin just made. Kevin is one of the greatest basketball players of all time. He's won multiple championships. He's been the MVP of the NBA. He's won gold medals. He just said he's a student of the game and he has more to learn. The, that mindset, that's the separator. Kevin, you are born with such an insane natural talent. You've worked your ass off to develop that talent, but to have that mindset, that's your separator. I don't think people understand that. Yeah, I mean, I, I get a kick out of me learning new things out there, you know. Um, you know, being around so many different players, you pull – you know, small things from their game every time, you know, so watching guys that can shoot the basketball different ways, how they come off pin downs. I, I used to watch all types of stuff, you know what I mean? So I always feel like I can learn. And the game is always evolving. And as a player, sometimes you don't see that when you're in the inside and coaches and executives, they may see where the game is going before you. So it's always good to ask questions and see, and see what their thoughts are on, on, on the game. And it's only going to advance me as a player and advance the game of basketball overall, you know. So I always took that approach.